Hey, this is Jorgen Han Hatu, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use an OBD2 scan tool. And I'm also going to show you the right way to use it and the wrong way to use it. But first, I'm going to go over the codes real quick. Alright, and here is my OBD2 scan tool. And real quick, you got your P0 codes and P1 codes. P1 codes are manufacturer specific codes, and P0 codes are generic codes. Um, they do try and have a general generic language but then um for like the dealership and stuff they like to make it easier for technicians so they do uh p1 codes which go way beyond just the um generic standard so once you got that down um the next number um following p0 or p1 so p0 blank um, stands for what system the code is affecting. So I'm just going to run through these real quick. Now you can pause this, rewind, do whatever later um, to go back over it, but I'm just going to run through them real quick here. Alright, um, if it's a P01, so um, all these numbers are going to be filling in the blank for the third uh, character. If it's a 1, it's going to be fuel air metering systems. If it's two, um, they actually haven't designated something for that yet, but it's uh, open for later use. Um, then three is ignition and misfire diagnostics. Four is auxiliary emissions controls. Five would be speed sensors. Six is powertrain control module. Seven is auto transmission system. And eight, they haven't designated yet, is for future use and nine is thermostat and cooling systems. All right, I'm gonna take you outside and let's uh, actually show you how to use this thing. All right, I'm in the car now, and um, there's two places that the OBD2 connector can be located, um, I believe, if memory serves me correct. And the first place is gonna be anywhere under the driver's side um, the area down here. Um, and then I also believe it can be somewhere in the middle console. Um, don't quote me on that because I'm, I'm just speaking from memory here. So, But the first thing you need to do is take your OBD2 connector. And it's pretty easy here on the Civic. So just sitting right up. Yeah. I mean, no, there's no light there. But it's not too hard to find, so I'm going to leave that to you. Alright, and then you're going to turn your key to the on position. And then I'll start the car just to show you that. I think my check engine light. Huh. Turned off. Well, I did have it on. Um, It might still be stored. I don't think it will actually. But... Let's see what we got here. Okay. Alright, and then real quick, I'm going to explain what not to use your ABD2 scanner for this is not a parts replacer tester you don't test it um, see the code find the part and replace it that is what AutoZone has very cool that's what AutoZone has planted into the public's mind uh, most common code is the um, oxygen sensor code and AutoZone uh, a million times a year sells oxygen sensors when they don't need to be sold so, I mean, I've seen people say, hey, you know, shops rip you off and all that stuff. Well, um, to be honest with you, if you take your car to AutoZone and you get it checked out for free and they sell you an oxygen sensor, you install your oxygen sensor and then um, you turn your car, your car on and you take it there to get it reset uh, and the code comes right back on for the same thing. Then who's really ripped you off? Um, so basically, what this is, is I like to call it the, the CSI tool. You want to use this as a diagnostic tool and not a diagnostic wand. So what I mean by that is um, this will help you to find the problem, but it's not the automatic fixer. So let's go back. And here we're at our main menu. Um, the, normally, you're just going to go vehicle diagnostics. Um, do you want to erase data stored in the tool from previous? Um, not really, no, it's fine. Um, then you can read codes like I just showed you, and that's going to pull up uh, any stored codes, and it's going to tell you what the code is. 
um, pending codes, uh, erase code, erase code, that's how you clear, uh, make sure you want to erase code, yes, uh, that'll get rid of whatever you got, but, um, I mean, you don't fix it, it's not going to go away, I can promise you that. Oh, one cool thing, though, is on 96 and 97 vehicles, um, I think 96, you have two codes, you can have two incompletes or whatever, so, if you do have a code, you can't get away. I mean, that's one way to kind of get around uh, fixing something. If it's a code that requires uh, multiple startups to actually trigger. But, um, and that's also, I think you have one incomplete for 97. But anyways, uh, another really cool thing on here is, let's see, I think it's, it's uh, freeze, freeze data or whatever. Where is it? Freeze frame pretty awesome. Alright, view freeze data. Now, I wish I had a code to show you here. Um, I won't, it might pull up the last one. Let's see. Ah. Uh, okay, well, if, um, oh, you know, I don't have my car in the opposition. Right. Um, if you do have this, is like a code or whatever, it's really awesome. And I've seen it well, I've heard of, yeah, I don't have any, I've heard of, uh, getting people in trouble before, like, kids, uh, taking their parents' car out and dogging it, um, because it'll tell you the speed the car was at, the RPM the car was at, and I think a few other things, when the code was actually set. A uh, story about one of the kids in the class I had, uh, here a long time ago, uh, he got the check engine code or whatever, and, um, looked at the freeze data, and, uh, the vehicle speed sensor was at like 105 miles an hour when the code was set and the dad was upset that the car was broken came in and the teacher showed him and he wasn't too uh, happy with a student there so it's just pretty cool but also that helps you and um knowing when obviously knowing when the code was set but obviously uh when the problem may occur uh, it's really useful and helpful so um that's just a quick overview of how to use your obd2 scan tool and that's about it for today thanks for watching on to see you guys next time